Okay, um, I did a bit of thinking. Um, I was going to start going through the EOS code base and um, just look at different examples of them using the boost libraries and things like that. And while I was looking at the code base, I realized there's quite a bit of, you know, advanced C++ that we haven't gone over yet. Um, you don't really need this to write smart contracts, in my opinion, but I think what might happen is people will run into bugs or have issues while writing smart contracts, and they'll go to the EOS code on GitHub, um, obviously as a starting reference to try and figure out what's going on, and so the more C++ you know, the easier it'll be to read through their code. So I think it's a good idea to go through this stuff for readability perspectives, but uh, not necessarily for smart contract development. But as I said in a previous video, uh, the better C++ developer you are, probably the easier time you'll have writing smart contracts. Although again, it's not explicitly necessary at all. Um, another reason I chose to kind of go this route is um, while I'm making these videos, um, EOS is still under development, so the mainnet hasn't been launched yet. Uh, they're right in the process of releasing Dawn 3 currently. So I don't want to look at code that's going to change as a reference, right? There's there, there's a good chance that the files that we go through in these videos may not end up being on the mainnet EOS, so I don't really want to dive into that yet. So we'll just kind of start poking around some more advanced C++. That way when we do look at the actual EOS code that will be launched on mainnet, uh, you'll be more prepared to follow along with me. So what I have here is I've added two more two more um, uh, little demo programs, pointers and references.cpp and then templates.cpp. So we'll talk about pointers and references and then we'll do another video on templates specifically. Uh, I guess let's get started on this then. So we're going to go into this pointers um, file. Uh, I added a bit of uh, object-oriented programming mostly because it's a lot easier to do to talk about pointers when you have objects. Um, often that's what the pointers are used for is to reference some memory address that the object exists at. Um, so we'll, we'll start there I guess. Um, you can see here I've defined a class car. This is how you define classes in C++. I'm fairly certain the classes have the same or at least similar access types as Java, but you know, for this small tutorial, I just kind of went through a very, very basic class. Like everybody always uses a car when they're teaching object oriented programming, so um, I figured I'd do the same here, I guess. <laughs> Use a car. It's just very easy to come up with very basic examples uh, when talking about cars. So uh, here we have. Um, uh, three member variables associated with the car. I think by default um, the access control for classes in C++ is protected, but don't quote me on that. So uh, anything above the public uh, line here is uh, protected unless stated otherwise. Everything below this thing, this uh, modifier here is um, public, so any anyone can access it. In this case we have a public constructor. This is where we're constructing our car. Um, one thing to note is um, this arrow syntax. So typically when you reference a variable's, um, you know, or, or, a, or an object's member variables or methods, you'll, you, you're probably familiar if you're not a C++ developer, this dot syntax, right? So we have a car and it's got wheels so we can access those wheels directly. Um, however, in C++, you can actually get a pointer to an object rather than the object itself and in order to differentiate whether you're accessing a pointers, member variables, or me member methods or uh, the physical objects um, member variables you have to use this this um, arrow syntax. Um, another thing to note here is that this keyword in C++ you're actually given a pointer to your object and that's what this is. So here I'm taking the object that's getting created here, the car essentially I'm taking a pointer to this object that's getting created and I'm setting the wheels variable um, to the one being passed in the constructor. So this one up here. Um, right here I'm just doing some operator overloading um, again. I saw a question about this on the telegram a while back so I figured I'd throw um, some of that in there. Just kind of a very toy example to show how that works. 
uh, as you'll see down here in the main function. And then I also have this stupid toString method. Just This is purely just so we could print out the variables and show that they're actually working and doing something. Uh, so let's get into the main method now. So this is the syntax for getting a pointer, essentially, to a variable. So here we're creating a car, but the car isn't living in memory. It's living on the heap, I believe. I don't remember. It's been a while. Um, it's it's not sorry okay so it's not this this car object isn't getting created in the stack which means it's not in the actual program memory but it's located somewhere in the heap it's a very convoluted it's not explicitly necessary that you need to know this but just know when you hit this new keyword it's getting allocated somewhere other than in your program's memory which is why you need a pointer to that object um, so here I, I'm creating this object in the heap and then I'm referencing a, a pointer to it and the the alternative to this below is this car A where I'm actually creating the object in the program's memory so it's not a pointer to the car itself um, one thing I wanted to show here uh, just to illustrate the point is a lot, many people may uh, think oh okay I have this new car like you would in Java let me print it out so if you try and do this if you try and if you try and print out the car um, you're gonna get a memory address as you can see here, so right, you're you're not actually getting the car object specifically here. You're getting you know uh, a reference to the car, and that's even though I've uh, I've uh, enabled the operator overloading here. So as we'll see when I print out the a the uh, a car instead of the c car, um, that that shouldn't be printing out a memory. That should be printing out all the member variables associated with the car. Um, so rather than doing that, I decided, okay, let's print out the, the um, let's use the toString method to actually print out the variables that of the object that we're pointing to in the heap memory. Um, as you can see here, we're using the arrow syntax because it's a pointer, so to access the method, we need to use the arrow syntax. Another thing I wanted to do was just prove that this keyword is in fact, you know, a reference that you're given uh, internally to the object. So as you can see here, it's the same exact um, memory address. Um, the alternative, again, as I said, to having the pointer, which, um, oh, I forgot to say, uh, part of the reason why you even have this pointer is it allows for much more efficient code, um, which is what people often talk about when they're talking about C++ or C. They say, oh, well, it gives me much better uh, control over memory. Uh, this is one of the things they're talking about is you have the option to create the the object wherever you want rather than like in Java with the JVM it's that all that is handled for you you're not really allowed to alter that um, short of you know altering bytecode and things like that um, what this does is it allows you to do much more efficient programming whereby like I could have a function maybe that you know something like uh, something like this right and it could take a car a car object and like let's say we increase the speed um, ah, I guess we don't have a speed but uh, you know in here we could do maybe something like this right just for stupid illustration purposes we're, we're in, let's say we had a speed variable in this in this car object and we wanted to increase it so anytime we uh, run drive car we're gonna access this member variable well, the problem with this is you're passing in that entire object into the function. Um, whereas if you're going to use a pointer to that object, in this case, like the, the object's really small, right? So it, it's not a huge deal. But let's say you're dealing with you know many, many objects or they're very large objects. In this case, you're, you're actually only pointing in the address or sorry, passing in the address to this function as a parameter rather than the whole car itself. So it makes the code much, much more efficient to do it this way. So you're, you're just basically, oftentimes you'll you'll see in code, uh, you're just kind of passing around um, what amounts to an integer in your program's memory, but it's actually you know a reference to a, a big heavy object existing somewhere on the heap. Um, so that's one of the reasons why you'll see programmers, see programmers do this. Um, just to uh, illustrate the operator overloading, uh, you can see here I'm printing out the A object, 
Remember, before this printed out the memory of the C, the C car. Um, here, since I've overloaded the OStream operator, we're actually going to get this instead of a reference to the object. So we'll actually go through and print out the member variables. Uh, what am I doing? Oh, oh, right. These aren't don't actually have the speed variable as I said before. So let's get rid of these methods. Let's build it again and run it. And you can see that we're printing out this V8 engine car with ten doors and four wheels or whatever it was. Um, so another thing to note is the here um, is how you pass in references to objects. So um, this ampersand here is essentially it's very similar to the the asterisk down here where we're doing the pointer to the the memory. Um, here we're doing a reference to the memory. Um, they're very very similar. However, I've often heard better C++ programmers than myself say um, an, a reference to an object is much less intrusive than a pointer to an object. Um, it, and it, it's what I've heard is it's it's very similar to the physical like pointing at something, right? Uh, you've, if you have something like a cup, a coffee cup sitting on your table, right, you're going to point to that object specifically. Whereas a reference is more of a putting a label on it and then passing the label to somebody. Uh, so it's like maybe the coffee cup has my name on it. Well, you can take that lab the sticker that with my name written on it, take it off and hand it to somebody. Um, essentially saying, okay, this is where the coffee cup is and these are the, the, the aspects of the coffee cup. So you're not actually going out and pointing to it or going out and getting the object in memory. Um, that's kind of signified here by the fact that you can still use the dot operator on this reference to a car rather than having to use the arrow operator. So it's another way of like kind of checking yourself before you wreck yourself. Um, I think that's everything for pointers and references. Um, oh, uh, one, one more thing about references. Part of the reason you even use references in C++ is so that you can alter state of the object uh, internally to a function and have that state stay. So for example, if we did another, maybe this other uh, drive car example, and we pass in a reference to the car, we could actually change the car's, um, let's say we wanted to change the number of wheels in, on the car, right? Uh, so let's do this actually and see what happens. And then we'll, I'll show you another example where this may, may not work out as well as you might ha have hoped. So as you could see before we had wheels equal to 10 Oh, right. I made wheels private. Uh, just for, for uh, you know, just to make this easier, let's make the wheels public as well and run this again. And now we can see the wheels are actually set to 100, which is what I, I set them to here in this drive car example. Well, let's let's say we remove the reference to the, C car, to the uh, car that we're passing in, in this case the A car. What would happen then? you can see the wheels actually stayed at 10. So the object isn't mutable in C++ inside the drive car function unless you pass it as a reference. Um, so that's one of the very big reasons why, you, why you'll see um, people pass in references. One of them is efficiency. Um, the other one is so you can mutate objects inside the function. Uh, okay, I think that's everything for references and pointers as well as, well as a little bit of operator overloading and um, object-oriented programming. In the next one, we'll look at templates. See you then.